Hello, my name is Eddie Jennings and I want to welcome you back. In this video, I'm going to talk about the IT home lab and where to start with one. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you this video is not going to be a list of you need to get these things for your lab because as we're going to discuss, no two labs have the exact same requirements. Rather, what, what I'm hoping to do is to give you some conceptual ideas of stuff you need to think through to determine what you actually w w would need for your lab and, and what to, to do in your lab. So getting right to it, what, what is the home lab? It, it can be anything. But really, in my opinion, there, there, there are, are two things that we, we try to do with, with the home lab and, and two, two reasons why IT professionals tend, tend to have them. The first is for training. This is probably the, the, the most common reason to have a home lab. You're either working toward a certification or there is something that has interested you and you want to see if you can build it and, and actually make it function. Or there is something that you need to do for, for your work and you would like to become more skilled at whatever this thing is. And so therefore in your home lab you might try to create a little um, miniature scenario like you would have at work to be able to work on skills. Also, uh, you might have a client that wants to, to be able to deploy a particular thing and making uh, like a proof of concept in your home lab will allow you to go to your client and give them some advice on can, can the thing be deployed? If so, here are things to watch out for. The other reason for a home lab is really more of discovery and th this, this is closely tied to the training part. I, I consider it something different because for, for, for the training there is usually a specific goal in mind. For, for discovery the, the sky is kind of the limit. This is where you would have a couple of things you might be knowledgeable about and you want to ask can, can they work well together. For example you might have a little small active directory for us and you want to see if this particular uh, product or application can interface with, with, with Active Directory. Well, you might not have a specific business case for it, but it might be something that just, just interests you, and so th there's a discovery element to it. But ultimately, the the things that you're wanting to do drive what 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 you need to have for the home lab. Now, it is easy to get out of control with planning what you want to do with the home lab, and I I can speak from personal experience with this. You have um, some particular thing that that you you want to do. For example, let's say that you wanted to um, to deploy System Center Configuration Manager in, in a home lab and, and test pushing out software and such. Well, with SCCM, you know, there you have the SCCM server. You have to decide how you want to handle the database for SCCM, either have it on that or have a separate SQL server. Um, often you will see SCCM in an Active Directory environment, so then you have to have your server for AD, you have to configure all, all of that, and then eventually you'd have client servers that you're pushing software to. Now, that's not necessarily out of control, but it's it's something that you, you have to manage your, your, your expectations, and really this can be an opportunity to practice doing some, some project management, such as, all right, I, I want to do, do my SCCM lab. I know I'm not going to be able to do this, you know, in just a couple of hours on on a weekend. I have to figure out what what parts that that I need to be able to make this happen. And you can make a project plan out of that and, and execute it. And then once you're done with it, you know, you have a couple of VMs. Let's say that you've pushed out something like Seven uh, Zip to it, and Seven Zip had problems. Uh, you pushed it out and you realize that while if, I, if you go to the individual VMs, you'll see that 7-Zip is installed and it's functioning great, but you might see that in the monitoring for that particular piece of software, you see that it's not being detected, so therefore SCCM thinks that the software installation has failed. We have to figure out why that is and work with detection rules and such. But by the end of it, you'll have, you can say, hey, I've pushed out 7-Zip, everything looks great, and you've gained a ton of experience that you can bring to job interviews and such saying you know this this is how I solve this problem albeit um, deploying SCCM is at a very small scale you know you have just just a, a couple of, of client machines that you're working with but conceptually it, it works similar to a much larger scale you don't have to do something as um, as complex as, as SCCM you can just have a, a couple of virtual machines if you wanted to practice uh, configuring a web server and um, testing accessing a 
web page. The key is you, you need to have a particular goal of what you're trying to do. And my advice to you, if you have never had a, a home lab before, is to start small with that goal. Um, likely you, you're, you're, you will be doing some, some kind of training. Take a particular um, learning objective for certification and see if you can practice that, that objective in your lab building the, the the things that you need to be able to, to practice set objective which that that then gets into the what do you need for your for your home lab well again it depends on what you're wanting to do um, I would say if you have no lab and, and don't, don't know where to start at a bare uh, not necessarily bare minimum but but really at, at a minimum you need to have a computer that can run virtual machines and this doesn't have to be enterprise grade server hardware if you have that available great you can say hey I've worked on enterprise grade hardware do, doing this kind of stuff but as long as you have something that can run Hyper-V or, um, or KVM and I'm pretty sure uh, v VMware has a free version as well I don't know how, how many features and such it, it, it has in it but it, I, I'm 99 percent sure there's a free version of VMware available if you want to use that as, as a hypervisor but just something that allows you to spin up a couple of VMs. Now if you're wanting to do networking in your home lab there you, you would probably need to get some network e equipment you can usually get some old, old switches and stuff for relatively um, cheap to, to be able to have the physical hardware if you have access to something like Cisco Packet Tracer you can do a whole lab in itself and I know there are going to be some folks out there that's like Packet Tracer is not the same as the real scene well that's true but if you're trying to learn some some concepts and you have a budget of zero Packet Tracer is a great way to be able to have that little home lab albeit it is a 100% virtual little home lab to be able to work on some network concepts so really the, the the answer to where you start with the home lab deals with you what do you want to do and then when when you answer that try to get as specific as, as you can because that, that'll help keep the um, the scope creep from from happening with, with your home lab idea and you end up doing this well I want to be able to do this but then I want to be able to monitor it on and on and on and, and you never start the key is starting and then once you've built something if you want to add on to it sky's the, the, the limit there the one other thing that I recommend that that, that, that you do and you, you wouldn't do this in every situation but if it's something that is that was relatively simple to build tear it down and build it again this goes back to my days of being a middle school band director and, and teaching and you have teaching is repeating teaching is repeating teaching is repeating my education professor used to always tell us say that three times and there's a reason for that because that is exactly how how you learn you learn by repeating something and um, hopefully what, 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 what you're repeating was successful or if it wasn't successful then you make some minor alteration to how you, you try to build it the second time around to either make it work or perhaps make it work better if you have experience with with your uh, home lab or you, you have advice to, to give to folks that, that are just starting out with, with, with a home lab as far as being able to, to focus their energies and such I encourage you to comment on on, on the video I'm sure folks that, that, that are watching would, would like to hear what, what you have to say as well also if you enjoyed this video make sure you click like and subscribe to the channel so you're aware of when new content comes available thanks for your time and I look forward to talking to you the next time